tonight's forecast clear skies that means we're gonna shoot we're gonna shoot we are going to shoot the leo galaxy no we're not why am i struggling with this take my goodness <laughs> so i'm gonna try to shoot the leo triplet I've always been fascinated by space and the endlessness of the universe. I still remember the first time I looked into a telescope and was completely blown away by the moons of Jupiter. So when the whole world went into lockdown, this was the perfect opportunity to get one myself and take my first baby steps into the universe from my London rooftop terrace. This is me taking the next step in my astrophotography. I'm also taking the next step in a different direction with a mini telescope and a mini camera that I'm going to be use, using for guiding my telescope. A star tracking mount follows the rotation of the Earth to keep the stars from moving. This lets you take longer exposures. How long you can go exactly depends on your mount's quality and the magnification from the telescope. When decently polar aligned, my red cat and I off drawn maxes out at around three minutes. If you want to go longer than that, the mount just can't do it. So I'm going to be using this camera connected to this small telescope and lock onto a star and read out the error from that star and course correct basically. ZWO's um, 30 f4 mini scope, which I think will will fit very well aesthetically because it's going to be in the same red and black color. So let's take a look at this. I really like the boxes they come in. It's like you're buying a phone. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> it's not very big, is it? Which is great because then it's not going to weigh a lot. And here's the camera, the ZWO um, ASI 120mm uh, Mini. That is one. Oh wow, it was even smaller than <laughs> it was even smaller than I expected. This is the camera. Nice. Maybe it just goes straight in. <laughs> nice. Nice. Look at that. that. That's gonna look really nice. Let me take the cap off. That's really nice. I'm super happy with this. Super happy with this. From the aesthetics point of view, I obviously haven't tried it yet. A few more accessories. Cables. Got a guide cable. And then finally, a deck mount. So this is the mounting shoe for the guide scope. I mean, that's going to be so nice. And obviously you would screw the base onto the red cat because it has four holes like this on top of it. So there are the screw. Why am I only getting two screws for this? That doesn't make any sense. What? Okay. WTF, four holes, two screws. The guide scope is just too wobbly. Can't really attach it properly either. Maybe with a pair of pliers. The guide scope there, as you can see, um, it fell off during the night. No! Yeah, I guess I didn't get any guiding. Um, power adapter I have right now only managed to output two amps so I can't really attach anything that requires power I need more juice for that but that's fine I don't really have anything that would draw any power well I guess apart from the guide scope that is
Hopefully that will let me actually use the guide scope. The power supply that I had purchased had some sort of glitch in it that um, continuously turned off and on the ASIR Pro. Super annoying. We're gonna have to do without guiding tonight, which kind of sucks, to be honest. But anyway. Bunch of issues last night. First of all, it took me forever to find the triplet. It's getting a bit cold out here. I think it was around midnight when I eventually found them. And of course, I didn't leave much time to shoot. I was completely lost looking around Leo's butthole, where the galaxies are supposed to be. And I was just about to give up when all of a sudden I see two of them right there. <laughs> so I framed them up and I dare say focus is more or less perfect. Brrr. Freaking cold. <laughs> and now I'm sitting in my warmest room in the house. The ASI Air Pro really made this more comfortable, for sure. Right now I'm looking at the first picture. This is what the triplet looks like. You can see it. One, two, three. This one I believe is called the Hamburger Galaxy. I've set it to take four minute exposures and I'm gonna keep a lookout for star trails because I am pushing it with four minutes. Might be too much. It looks like my stars are a bit oval. Okay, so the third one, again, showed signs of star trails. I mean, clearly you can see star trails here. Stars are not round, they're oval. I've stopped the four minute exposures now and I'm doing three minutes. So not a very particular fruitful night tonight. I had a bunch of issues. Uh, every other picture that I took basically had star trails. The tracking was horrible last night. I mean, every other photo had elongated stars and like oval, oval shaped stars and, and which made me kind of worry that there was something wrong. I wonder if my polar alignment was off. I don't think it was. Possibly the stability of the mount. And then the uh, mounds ran out of power about an hour before dawn. So the last shots were like complete star trails. Basically the last 10 pictures were all screwed up because it didn't track properly. They had really clearly defined star trails. And then finally, since I started taking the dark frames so late, I had light leak into them. So they're basically ways that I have to retake them tonight. I guess I stopped shooting at, at four, four, something like that. So they all have like dawn light on them, so I have to redo them. So yeah, not a great night. I guess one thing was positive at the very least, and that was that it was clearly high enough for me to be able to shoot in that direction. Which is over my chimney and everything. I guess it was still over the city, so we'll see what effect light pollution has. New chances tonight, hopefully. Looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day today. Too bad I'm working. So finally my uh, new AC adapter was delivered. 10 amps maximum at 12 volt, which should be more than plenty to drive all my equipment that I have, the ASIR Pro, the camera, the guide scope, and the mount. So this night I might actually be able to try guided tracking. If everything works, I'm gonna try and set it up now in the daylight just to see. see what happens. So this failed because I couldn't get enough power draw. But it's working. Nice. But I get this stupid error. Connect fail. Please open guide camera first. Okay.
I just try to connect to the demo mount interface, just to play around with it. And when I disabled the demo instrument, I went back and then tried connecting to my mount. Then all of a sudden it worked, like with no explanation as to why. So, I mean, I guess another bug. This will be the second, at least the second unexplained bug uh, so far, uh, which I guess is okay, like teething issues, new software, whatever. This might be the first night that I actually get to shoot with guiding and it's going to be interesting to see how long exposures I can take. So the image for tonight is still going to be the Leo triplet, quick snack, and then I'm going to start polar lining and set up. Now my ASI Air isn't turning itself on, which is really weird. Actually, it looks like the power adapter is in Aha! That was it. <laughs> Duh. I've set the guide scope to track Venus. Just wanted to see how it works. And it seems like it's actually working quite nice. Exciting. Venus was actually a big help in, in, in letting me focus the guide scope as well. And I think Hinting the first star in Leo, maybe over there. So you're looking at Leo, the mighty Leo. The Leo triplet is just below his rear end. There's a star there that's called a Sharta. <laughs> Sorry, had a Swedish moment there. Um, not very far from that star, slightly below to the side, you have the three galaxies. The software that the ASIR uses under the hood to do guiding is PHD. The acronym apparently stands for Push Here Dummy. I'm looking through the guide camera and it's looping, sending me pictures at a frame rate of 0.33 frames per second. And I guess I'm just gonna start. So I'm no calibrating on a star just south of Leo's butt called Sharta. <laughs> and as soon as it has done its calibration, we will start to see the mount reacting to it. You can see the odd blinking there. So now what happened was that it's turning off the mount and it just measures how much the star is drifting so that it gets an idea of how much star drift we're dealing with and then it knows how much it, it needs to compensate. So now it's guiding. So now we're starting to see the, uh, the error graph here. Right ascension is in blue and the uh, declination error is in red. And the error doesn't look too bad, I guess. I guess the only thing that's interesting to look at is the blue line because my mount only has a um, right ascension motor. Obviously we can't do anything about the declination error because I don't have a declination motor on my electron mount. The blue error in, in right ascension is the only thing that we actually can fix. But I guess it is heartening to see that the declination error isn't, isn't too bad. What does it say? Within two arc seconds. That's not bad at all actually. I guess that suggests a decent polar alignment. Oh, does it got you? So we're ready to start shooting. Nice. I just finished my longest shoot ever. So five minutes. And man, no star trails. Nada. And you can pretty clearly see the three galaxies as well even though there's lots of noise still. But, and the hamburger galaxy, you can clearly, you can see structure there. That is so cool. That is so cool. I'm gonna push this thing. Well, see, the thing is now I'm actually halfway through the spectrum here. I have my histogram curve down here, right? The blackest pixel gets half the amount of light. 
and you can see there's quite a lot of saturations in the star here towards the end here. So maybe I actually don't want to go further than this. Hmm. So I'm really putting my uh, guider to the test right now. I've lowered the ISO to 400 and I'm taking seven minute long exposures. And I'm just gonna get the second picture down any second now. Let's see what we end up with. <laughs> wow. Wow. No elongation of stars. A perfect little, let me crazy zoom in here on one star. All right, look at that. Like it's perfectly circular. No oval shapes, anything. I'm still saturating a little bit, but I managed to, to push the background, the, the blackness of space, down to about one third of the spectrum, which means I have much more room to, to play with here in the, um, in the upper frequencies. So I know that this is probably a bit long. The chance, or the risk I should say, of a satellite passing over or an airplane passing over and completely ruining a shot, it's quite significant. That happens all the time here, sadly, because we're on the flight path into Heathrow. But still, I think I'm gonna take my chances here. I've now taken four shots and it's still looking good. So I'm definitely continuing with this. And if it gets cloudy, I mean, I can hopefully do proper dark frames. <laughs> Seven minute dark frame, that's gonna be nuts. I'm not gonna get 33 of them, that's for sure. Off to a great start, really. And it's so nice to just sit in here and sip my whiskey and just hear how the camera is working upstairs. And I get the image fed down to my iPad in real time as soon as they're ready and I can just inspect them. Cheers. The camera battery unfortunately ran out around just around midnight so I didn't get that many shots last night. I woke up in the middle of the night around two or three but then it had clouded over already so I only got about nine full seven minute exposures. The ones I did, I think, turn out great. But I think for this to turn out as good as I'd hoped, I would probably need another image run. And it looks like I might actually get another opportunity tonight. So uh, there's always something. Some 35 million light years away, these are the three galaxies of the Leo triplet. Out of the three, the Hamburger Galaxy is arguably the most interesting. An edge-on spiral galaxy that's similar in size to our own. Its dust plane has been dragged out by the gravitational pull of the other two, and we can see it bending downwards, almost making it look like a bowl rather than a disk. M66 is the biggest and brightest of the three galaxies, and we can clearly see its spiral structure. We can also see that one of the spiral arms has been bent upwards, most likely caused by the gravitational pull of the others. Since 1989, we've observed three dying stars explode in supernovae here, outshining the entire galaxy for weeks. M65 is the smallest triplet at a magnitude of 10.3. Poor in dust and gas, we see little evidence of star formation. However, Evidence also suggests that hasn't always been the case. Separated by only a few hundred thousand light years, the three galaxies are gravitationally bound and will eventually pull each other apart before merging into a single super galaxy. I am so excited today because today is the day that I am replacing my DSLR camera with a dedicated astronomy camera.